Good evening, everybody. Uh, we're back with another Repito live stream event with, well, three quarters of everyone that should be here right now. Uh, we've got Dan Darnell up in the top beside me there. I'm Jordan. We've got Matt. Everyone knows Matt. And at some point, uh, well, we've got Jason's layout. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to share us with Kingston stuff. So hang on. Oh, okay. I, I could have cross posted that in the beginning. Really? Yeah, but you're off getting the key. Oh, whoops. You guys start without me. Yeah. I already did. did. <laughs> you're just the entertainment now. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Um, all right, so I guess tonight we're going to be going over some of the new products we, uh, we just announced. Uh, we had a new N-Scale product we announced just last week. We've got our new swag store. We're going to be talking about the order deadlines we've got coming up tomorrow. That's for the PAs, our HO scale PA and PV locomotives, as well as the uh, HO B140 uh, series boxcars. Uh, we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be answering questions. Uh, make sure you send in your interesting questions. We always get lots of uh, stuff like, can you make an SD70 M-2 and just stuff like that. But uh, we'll see what we can answer throughout the evening. Uh, Jason's still there. Oh, there he is. There we go. Back. We're only three minutes. How's it going, eh? Matt, I thought Matt. you worked for Arthur. What are you doing here? You, you remember hiring him? Oh, don't right. Remember, don't you remember the video where you hired you threw him in the back of a mother? pickup? I, I got a link. Here I am. <laughs> <You're> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Um, why don't we get right into the order deadlines? Uh, I'm going to share some stuff here. Let's start. I should start with the PAs. Get that pulled up. Everyone see that? You guys can see that? We do. Excellent. So, yeah, the order deadline for our HOPAs is coming up tomorrow. We've got lots of interesting paint schemes. Uh, we got the new samples that uh, actually the new SP sample that Bill painted and deckled up for us. Um, I don't know if we have a picture up here. Well, there's his video anyway. Um, that actually just went on YouTube last week. He's looking like he's maybe not having the best time. Okay, it's a good. Video. I have I have I have a call for um, the PA fans out there. Um, so far, our biggest selling diesel locomotive uh, is the E8. <laughs> okay, if you look at, at all of our locomotives. So if you're a PA fan and you want to kick those EMD butts, all right, get your order in by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, either from us or from your favorite dealer. But the PA, as like the E8 deadline is not till the summer. And it's already the orders for the E8 are already more than $100,000 more than the PAs. So Alco fans, now's your chance to shine. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so we've got, let's look at the first, uh, or sorry, the, uh, the list of stuff here. We, if you don't know, well, we've got the PRRs. That's the PRR sample that Bill did. He did both the SP and the PRR samples, hand-painted and deckled. Uh, there's, a, there's one error in the samples. Just want to let you guys know. Uh, if you look closely at the cab window, it's a little bit low. And just want to let you know because we're fixing that before production. So the cab, the cab door window is a little bit low on the samples. That, that's being fixed. Awesome. And of course, these are pre-production samples, so there's a, a lot of exactly. little, little, little bits we still have to add, but like rivets and stuff like that. And, so, well, and the SP is missing the, the top of the nose grab because we didn't get one. Yep. But that'll all come in production. So of course, we've got the Santa Fe War Bonnet. This, these are the kind of the later units that, uh, that were, as they were modified towards the, uh, I guess, in the late 50s through, through the 60s, up until they were retired. We've got those, A's and B's. We've got three of the DNH units. Uh, one of them, 17, we're not doing because it, it kind of was totally different. The grills were all different on that one, and it would be, we need to do a whole new show. So we're doing the three. And of course, they didn't own any B units, so no B units for those ones. We've got Rio Grande. Rio Grande's doing very well. Our, our top sellers are Santa Fe, Southern Pacific, and Rio Grande. Those are our top sellers. Yeah, and we definitely want to do more Rio Grande stuff eventually, right? Well, this is this is like the ski train was accurate Rio Grande hundred percent. This is accurate Rio Grande hundred percent. So we're getting a reputation. Yeah, we'll also have the twelve hundreds. 
Yeah, yeah the twelve hundreds. Yeah. Those, yeah, those also did very well. The Rio Grande twelve hundred. Rio Grande's a good seller for us. Absolutely. Yeah, those so that Lehigh Valley. How well has Lehigh Valley done? It's uh, it's in the middle. Yeah. You know, it's it's Lehigh Valley's not a uh, a, as flashy, famous road as you know, some like Santa Fe or something Pacific. But I do get to cut your finger to check the color. Yeah, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> read about that one. That was a few years ago. Now. So uh, several people told us it's blood red. So Dan cut my <laughs> finger so we get a color sample. <laughs> We've got the uh, the New Haven Green and Gold the three A units. New York Central and the Lightning Stripe. We got so we got the New York Central and the PNLE uh, uh, units there in A's and A's and B's. We got the nickel plate. Nickel plate's doing very well. Yep. Awesome piece. Yeah, nickel. And we've had a lot of help from uh, Tony Customers buddies to get the details right on that. Absolutely. PRR in the uh, Tuscan Red. That's with the train phone antennas, as you saw in the sample back there. And of course, A's and A's and A and B sets. My personal favorites, all the SPs. We've got the daylight, uh, daylight units, A's, A's and B's, and uh, bloody nose. Those uh, are all doing. Those are all doing very well. The SP yeah. is. Uh, I, I think we've become known as an SP manufacturer because of our starting with SP10, the RDC, and we follow that with the B36-7, uh, the, the SW1200, uh, which is our biggest. Uh, RS11. The SW1200 is our biggest, SP is our biggest selling road of SW1200. And this is our biggest selling road of the uh, the PAs. Now, on the other hand, we've got one paint scheme that hasn't done so well. We've got the 1947 uh, American Freedom Train PA. Uh, this has, we've actually been really shocked. This has not sold very well. We've only got about half the orders we need to uh, get this into production. So, Well, we, but we did list it as a conditional release because we expected it's a bit of an oddball. Yeah, yeah. Right. But yeah, hopefully, I think we need about, uh, I won't give an exact number, but I'm hoping that we can get there. Yeah, hopefully. And of course, that we'll still get more orders as the, uh, as the dealers I'm, get their orders in. The yeah, line. because because we're still getting all, we haven't got the dealer distributor orders in yet, the final ones, mm -hmm. uh, there's a very good chance we'll make it with the Freedom Train. Absolutely. All right, so that's the PAs. And of course, we're doing both uh, uh, DC and DCC sound versions of very important it's uh esu lock sound is uh v5 is what's coming in these things yes um we have uh from, from esu fans who were uh slow to order they they went with dc thinking that they'd have to upgrade to esu uh, it, it, this comes with esu so it's not too late to change your order to dcc sound yep absolutely now uh the other project we have coming up for deadline tomorrow you guys can see that that's showing there that is the uh, our PCNF uh, SP B140 series boxcars. So we actually retooled the whole roof of this because we didn't we didn't like how uh, how it, the original one turned out. So uh, oh, we've lost Jason again. I'm here. Oh, okay. We <laughs> thought you were beamed out. No, not me. <laughs> he's working on the Kingston folks. He's, he's work. He's working on his layout. <laughs> Oh, I just remembered, actually, uh, I just remembered that a lot of dealers don't know we use DSU lock sound, so I'm just sending a dealer email. Oh, fantastic. Good timing. I will, you know what? I'll, I'll, I got my laptop here, so I'll sit here while we're talking and send a dealer email. All, this, all is, right. this is how professional we are at Rapido. We're like a big multinational organization, and I'm sending a dealer email for my laptop. Kind of reminds me of flying back on an aircraft <laughs> next to you while you're showing off my latest engine that nobody knew about. <laughs> shush. You mean shush. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But uh, anyway, um, so yes, this is the B100 box here. This is our, our newly tooled sample. We still have a couple of up, uh, tooling revisions we have to do on, on this car. But uh, we've gone in with the full underbody detail. We've got the hydro cushion detail. Uh, separate metal grabs, all of the the, uh, the door tracks and everything that's all separately applied. Um, let me scroll down here and show you the different paint schemes. We've got the SP as delivered. This is from 1976. The 12 different numbers. The Golden West and the original scheme. I think there were 18 or 19 of these that were uh, from the fleet that were uh, repainted and rebuilt. We've got the later uh, patch out. So. 
I guess towards the uh, or into the 2000s, they were repatched back or they, they got their SQ reporting marks back. Um, and by that time, they'd faded quite a bit. So we've got uh, six of those. We've got the Amtrak cars, both the green and the, uh, the phase four. That was for the express service that disappeared around 2004. And uh, this one, of course, the uh, SP uh, UP repaints. Um, if anybody out there does have photos, I know I've mentioned this a couple times in the past, we do really need a couple or two more road numbers to fill out the, uh, the six pack. We've only found photos so far of four cars. So if you do know of two other road numbers of this series of boxcar uh, that were repainted into the UP shield, please let us know, send us an email and uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, if you are able to find a new number, we will uh, actually give you a, we'll give you a car as a compensation. We've got the Columbus and Greenville. And of course, undecorated, we've got uh, uh, either the six packs or the singles. So that's, uh, that's the B100s. And uh, we're, we're pretty happy with those orders. They've done really well. So order deadline is tomorrow. Get your numbers in, orders in. How's that uh, that email going there? I'm still writing it. <laughs> well, that means start me. Let's uh, let's do some questions then, and then we'll get on to the new uh, the new announcements from uh, from the last newsletter. Uh, N scale Canadians have they shipped yet? They've actually just arrived. Uh, we've got some processing to do. We're we're kind of uh, taking a little bit longer to do this because of COVID. We're we're in the middle of, a, of another stay at home order here, so we've got skeleton staff on hand uh hopefully about towards the end of next week we'll start shipping all the dealers and distributors out the door and uh direct customers will go out probably a couple days after that so it might take about 10 days 10 days to two weeks but we're, we're hoping to get everything out the door by uh by the end of the month before the end of the month uh this is actually this actually might be a question for you jason if you have a yeah uh, although anybody can answer it um, what's, uh, what's happening with our uh, new Rapido TCS decoder? Is that dead? Is that going ahead? Um, still in development? So I can tell you that it's, uh, it hadn't developed to a point where we we're comfortable putting it in a model. So it's not dead at all. Um, but we weren't willing to put, uh, and that's has been rigorously tested. We weren't willing to put it into the PAs, which is going to be the next one to have it. So, uh, it's still in development. And we'll just let, we'll let people know when it's progressed to a point where we're comfortable putting in an engine. We didn't want to, we didn't want to be a, uh, we, don't, we didn't want to have a customer model as a guinea pig for a new design. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep working on that. Got a question about cabooses. I guess this is for any, any of us. Um, after the Angus and Northeastern, are there any cabooses that we would like to see? Dan, Matt? I, I think the simple answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, whether we can talk about them yet, I don't think so. Probably not, but uh, we have a couple of uh, couple a of few ideas. ideas. And, yeah, yeah. And, so. and the same old adage, if you have drawings of a popular prototype, pass them along, that'll rocket it to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Drawings and photographs. Exactly. There's a couple of cars that we're very interested in doing, but uh, we don't have complete drawings, um, especially uh, underbody drawings for certain cars. Yeah. Um, if we can get that, then uh, that, that really goes along uh, a long distance. Here's an interesting question. Um, we've been getting this a lot actually lately in emails and on Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, is there any interest in us doing Mexican locomotives? There's the M424Ws that were down there, a lot of other stuff, H16s. The M420 that were down there were completely different than the Canadian or the BMW units. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's not likely we would do those, but Craig's always mentioning to do Mexican stuff. So it's something we should think about. Yeah, like right. something we should test the waters with one day. And there's a couple of prototypes that we've sort of been considering anyway that have a Mexican roads to them, aren't there? Well, the PAs. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. RS-11, I believe there was some. Yeah, so, yeah there was a lot of Alcos down there. Mm -hmm. And, and MLWs at that, so. A lot so, of possibilities. 
I would I would say that if there's a prototype we're looking at, we're not ignoring the Mexican roads. That's no. a safe statement. Just um, if they come out first or not, that's the question. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's see here. What else have we got? Let's answer one more question, then we'll have a look at uh, the uh, new announcements. Six here. HO fishbowl buses, how close are they to arriving? Uh, those are actually pretty close. Uh, Jason, have those left the factory? Email has been sent. Yes, they've all left the factory. Oh, excellent. So we'll probably see the, uh, the, the fishbowl buses probably in about a month's time, about mid middle of May, I'm going to say. Once again, the factory uh, forgot to send us a whole bunch of air samples. I haven't seen any. So we'll see them when they get here. <laughs> All right. Well, that's not too long, anyways. Uh, that's, of course, all of the different paint schemes that we've uh, we've announced for the fish bowls are are now on the way. It's a, it's an obscene number of buses, and the factory hates doing buses and says they never want to do them again. Yeah. <laughs> but we will, probably. Yeah, we will. We will. There may be if we do them again, but the, I suspect the price will go up because the factory. It's like there's so many printing positions on those buses. And it just takes forever to make them. So we started making these, what, July? I think last year. Yeah. 10 months in production. There's something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it really was. Mm -hmm. And so it got to the point where the factory realized that they, they, if they just focused on those, they'd, they'd lose money because they were taking so long. So what they did is they left them. And every time the print shop had nothing to do just because of the cycle of projects, say something was in assembly and something was in painting, and they, would, they moved all the buses back into the print shop and printed buses. So that's why it took so long. Yeah, as long as I get my my go fish bowl, that was my. I I've got trip so right behind me. Trip, trip to school. All that junk is behind me. There's like a whole bunch of plexi clothes and toolbox and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That's Pickering Station, which is a suburb of Toronto, and there's go buses. I've I've got like five bus bays. They will all be full with my go fish bowls. You need the little mini go bus. Yeah, the little guys, and 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 Pickering Transit had them too, right? Mm -hmm. You would dial a bus. And it was like that little, that then they rusted the bits really quickly. What are they called? Rickby's. Hmm? There's the Rickby's. Rickby's? Rickby's. I don't know. That's what Josh always called them. Josh knows about buses. That's right. Josh did drive one for almost 10 years. Yes, he did. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's talk about the uh, the new announcements then. Um, okay, this is one for Dan. You could probably talk a, a lot about this. Kind of your thing. The N scale uh, Procore GP20 tank cars. Yep, same as the HO ones. Yep, pretty much right down the same paint schemes and everything, just copied down N scale. Yeah, even the details like the, the piping, all the brakes, and everything are there. Mm -hmm. It's really phenomenal for N scale, the amount of detail we got into it. Yep, we've got the uh, renders on the screen here. This is actually for, right from the website. Yep. Uh, and these are, are these already in tooling? Yes. Yes, we're waiting for a sample. Very yeah. good. So that probably won't take too long. Yeah, I was, lo I was looking at the EASMs the other day of this project, comparing to another in scale project, and I was impressed at the amount of detail that's gone into these. They're going to be nice cars. Yeah, oh, yeah. Including Absolutely. you can't really see it in these renders, but the walkways are all photo etched. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Completely see through on the top and the bottom. Yeah, yeah and like you said, it, all the underbody detail on them. Mm -hmm. There's people ordering dozens of these dozens right and, and there's tons of uh, of road numbers uh, that mm -hmm. you can choose from so I, I think we're doing what 12 12 road numbers per road name for the most part except for uh, some of the other cars the uh, yeah, mostly two six packs yeah and yeah, yeah. Yeah, the uh, company service cars are three packs uh, i think they're four, four packs four so packs. that that is let me just scroll down a bit here so we've got the alberta government of alberta that's a six pack mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, those ran everywhere they didn't just run alberta Oh no! Yeah, they ran all, especially once they were, uh, they were, uh, they got new reporting marks. And was that that new eighties or nineties? And they just kind of tended to travel. Yeah, I photographed them here in Toronto quite often. Oh yeah, yeah. And for company service, we've got that is not an Alberta no something real tank car. Wrong there. We'll uh, looks like there. we're going to have to. Want to send an email there, Jason? <laughs> yeah, I can. Let's correct a while ago. What happened? Uh, well, our website went down for a bit. Maybe it took a. It's possible. It's yeah, it's an old snapshot. I was I was actually just getting the, the the live stream ready to go about six forty, and all of a sudden our website went down. Which I'm like, great. <laughs> Where's Howard? 
But uh, anyways, yeah, that's, uh, we've got the CP company service in uh, four different numbers, a BC Rail. Um, now this, how are we doing it with the BC Rail? It's, it's four cars, two paint schemes. We yeah, so two, two in the two dog and each. two in the BC Rail. Okay. Yeah. And um, we'll decorated, of course. The quote undecorated is painted unlettered. It's a fully assembled car. Mm -hmm. So it's just painted black and it's ready for anybody to put whatever lettering they want on it. Very nice. Excellent. Well, that's the GP20s. And uh, what's kind of a, well, we've got them in tooling right now. So what do you think an uh, ETA would be probably this time next year? Rival next spring, maybe? This is a very rough estimate. No, much sooner than that. Yeah, oh, okay. Like in the fall, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, fall the fall arrive. Uh, that shouldn't it would it shouldn't take too long to make those. Okay, excellent. I think we might make them at the new factory. We have a third factory that just opened this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Might make those there. Awesome. And uh, one other thing, actually, I don't think I uh, stopped sharing for a sec while I set this up. Uh, we just actually opened our new uh, swag store, um, so we are on Teespring now. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, someone someone in this meeting, the guy from the other company here is our uh, super swag store star. All right. <laughs> Matt, uh, Matt did the whole thing. And I said to say, Matt, you did a beautiful job. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, was, yeah, tell us about it. Um, I mean, <laughs> it was a lot of it was uh, previous designs, et cetera, that there's request for here and there that I think everybody was sort of saying and so I just ended up starting with a lot of that art and then a bunch of other ideas just kept coming from various locations and so just working with the way the store with Teespring is created on the back end of it um, you have what you're scrolling through now I mean um, we have a lot more variety available to us now with the hoodies and the the long sleeve tees and and coffee mugs, tea mugs for you guys. And you can um, also do different colors too. So if you don't yeah. like the black or the blue, you've got several different versions for most uh, most shirts. We need more brown. What? Did you break the Teespring site? Brown. I think I broke it, yes. <laughs> I want to see, we got mugs now too. Yeah. We do, we have mugs, we have turbo mugs. And as got this new stuff too, the B36-7 shirt's new. Yep. The uh go go zoom in on the CP Pac-Man. That that's awesome. You know what's interesting? This is actually our number one seller. Yeah. Of course yeah, it is. This is the, the number CP one seller of everything. I mean, it's it's only been a week, but this is the number one seller <laughs> we have. And of course, you can get it in different colors. So we need it, we need it in brown. Brown, brown is brown. everything, everything for you is brown. Did we send one to Bob Fallowfield? <laughs> Hey, he can pay full retail like everybody else. We pay full retail. Yes, we do. <laughs> get all these emails from people saying, hey, do I get the dealer discount on this? No. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. Go to the store and buy one. <laughs> so the, the one thing about the, how Teespring works is it, it's, it's we don't actually carry inventory in the warehouse. It's all produced on on as on demand by Teespring, right. and it's shipped from their warehouse. I believe it's in Kentucky. I don't think they have a Canadian outlet yet, but hopefully they will soon. Well, they and shipped to Canada and they've got a UK yeah. outlet too. So uh, I was just going to say there's a UK facility. So everyone that's over in the UK that is worried about the cost of shipping, check the Teespring site first before asking questions because it probably won't be as bad as you think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, so I, I have, I, I, I'm not sure why we have like repeatable branded jock straps on there. That's not what that is. It's a face mask. <laughs> Go get scroll, scroll up. Scroll up. Come on. That looks <laughs> like a jock strap. <laughs> okay. <sighs> that, that, that's your that's your favorite design too. The nerd. <laughs> How's that selling? Have we sold one? I don't yes, think so. We, did we, we did. Have, did we? we have sold a couple of nerd items. Yay! We're Probably missing we one thing on here. Flower power is in the top five. I think the we have no toques. We're Canadian. Yeah. Oh my God! You're right. Well, tubes generally have to be embroidered, so that the, almost brown. Yes. Almost brown. The almost brown. The <laughs> orange and brown. And that's um, as, that's as close as you're going to get. Jason, <laughs> Jason color coordinates his clothing uh, to match his coach interior. Oh, <laughs> the seventies. 
I actually just got a new, uh, I got two new brown disco shirts from the 70s. Those are awesome. Are they polyester? Is it powder blue? Yeah, don't, don't, don't put me near an open flame. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that. Um, Gorgeous. Oh, VF40 shirt. Yeah, That's we've got one. four different versions of VF40s. So we've got the Amtrak F40s. Two Amtrak F40s. Two Amtrak F40s. So that's phase two. But we have VIA in uh, as delivered. Uh, we've got the Canada Scheme. We've got Operation Lifesaver. And uh, we've got Renaissance plus that on the, on the mug as well. All mm -hmm. of the versions on the mugs. Be oh, these are gorgeous. Oh, there's the, oh, the, oh, the, ho the hoser. Yeah. We've got the FPA4 hoser. Yeah. Beauty. That's cool. And uh, so apparently someone's asking for bell bottoms. That's Jason wasn't, Jason wasn't, no, he wasn't sending an email. He was sending a, a request for bell bottoms. <laughs> we have any running yeah. shoes on there? Hey, these, these are my inside running shoes. Uh, I also have outside running shoes. That I is. actually, it's gotten to the point now where I've only worn bell bottoms because like I never have to dress up anymore because I'm not going to synagogue or anything like that because of COVID. So I've been wearing bell bottoms for the last 13 months. 25 years. Ago. Hopefully different pairs you are washing. Yeah, I have, I have lots of bell bottoms. I get them from a store in the UK uh, called Fuzz Dandy. That's where I get all my bell bottoms. Fuzzdandy.co.uk, and they ship to Canada and, and the States. So if you want to get bell bottoms like, uh, like every model train manufacturer who's worth his salt has, mm -hmm. then uh, you need to go there. <laughs> awesome. Not a pair of shorts? Uh, no, I, I guess right. Yeah, some model manufacturers like to have short shorts, but uh, no, I'm I'm going with the bell bottoms. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, well, why don't we talk about some of our May order deadlines coming up next? Uh, why don't you? You guys, why don't we get, let's answer questions. It's more fun. Okay. All right then. <laughs> but I'm going to avoid bell bottom questions. Uh, Any Star Trek you? questions? Doctor Who questions? Bus questions? Bus. <laughs> We already answered the bus questions. Are we making? Oh, can we put this on the mug? We did we could do that for at the Teespring, right? We put it yeah. on the mug because we've already designed it as a mug. We might as well. Yeah, that's cool. We can do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, give me the files. Yeah, yeah, well. Are we making Greyhound buses? Yeah, we did. We did make Greyhound buses. Greyhound. We did. We did like two runs of Greyhounds, didn't we? On, on the fish bowls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Two different versions, I think. Uh, what else have we got here? When are the end? When are, when are we going to make end scale Santa Fe reefers? End scale Santa Fe reefers. Well, we just announced the HO. We just announced them in HO. So. Yeah. So is that the one that they want in end scale? I think so. Probably. I I, I think the, it's a good idea to see how the HO one does first. Mm -hmm. That one's still right. pretty new. So. Yeah, we just announced it, and the orders are just starting to come in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Because it, it's 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 when you do a, a a car that's like a one road car like that, you never know how well it's going to do. Yeah, so I do really well. Like the NP box car we did, uh, sold out in a day mm -hmm. because people just didn't know about it and didn't order it. Yeah, and uh, we have to do a we have to do a small second run just because a lot of people didn't get theirs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what so, samples? Sorry, are you done? I was gonna say it's just that you got it, you got it if you don't pre-order. I know a lot of people are are still uh, nervous about pre-ordering, but that's the only way we know how many to make. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? We've had a couple times. Like you look at our, our warehouse now. The FL nines we delivered them a month ago, which is over a month ago. They're gone. Yeah. Unless you want undecorated, because due to an order entry, we have a whole stack of undecorated ones. <laughs> order entry error. Um, if you want to undeck FL9, give us a call. We'll give you a discount. Yes, we, yes, <laughs> we actually will. We do have, we do have, <laughs> if you buy 10, three or four <laughs> discount if you buy 10. <laughs> they're, they're literally cheaper by the dozens. So give us <laughs> one more, you get a discount. Yeah. Email yeah. Listra and she'll, she'll, she'll hook you up with some. Discount. We'll, we'll, th we'll throw in a free jar of paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, for, all, for all those guys that want undeck stuff, here you go. <laughs> The right. M420s, uh, we made, the orders were a bit light when, when the order deadline hit. So I said, I remember we had that discussion. We said, this is going to do really well. And we made a ton of inventory. Gone. It went in two weeks. Gone. Everything's gone. Right. So our warehouse right now, our, all our inventory fits on 
except for there's a one, a, one prod we haven't announced yet uh, that's sitting there. Um, but apart from that, it's like three shelving units is our entire inventory. Yeah, yeah. And this, the stuff just goes, it just goes. Um, and so people miss out because they don't pre-order. So it's, yeah, even uh, even all the end scale Osgood Bradleys are almost all those are gone too. It's only been two and a half years. <laughs> that was made on spec. But uh, yeah, so occasionally we do make surprise announcements. Oh, this year. Um, and there's uh, a couple of those coming this year. A couple of those surprise announcements coming. What's the surprise? Uh, it's you, surprise Jordan. You told you. <laughs> you're, Jordan, you're going to jump out of the cake. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm going to be sick that day. <laughs> for only a day? <laughs> I think that'd take me down for a week. <laughs> hey, don't make fun of my son over there. <laughs> uh huh. You two are growing closer and closer every day. <laughs> well, you know, if you, my my beard's getting long like his, but mine's all gray. Yeah, you got, like, you got, like, you got like 15 gray hairs. I've, I've there's got, a couple there. You I got also, more on the top. <laughs> I also do need to shave one, one of these days. Uh, so th th the background of that story is that, you, Jordan, you tell us. You tell a story about yeah, this. Yeah, we, we were at, a, we were at was it the Brampton show? Yeah. The last Brampton show before shows ceased to exist. Greater Toronto train show. Yes, yes that's the one. And uh, I can't remember who it was, but someone came up and was, was uh, uh, what did he say? He's like, oh, um, Oh, I'm trying to remember. He's like, I'm looking for, I'm looking, I'm, I'm uh, are he, I can't remember if he got me mixed up with you at the beginning. No, 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 no. Oh, he cool. says, I'm looking for, I'm looking for Jason. Yeah, I'm Jason for was Jason. here earlier. Yeah, yeah, right? he was here earlier. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to see him in a few minutes. I'm like, oh, uh, he's not here right, right, right now, but he should be back in 10 minutes. And he's like, and he's like, what did he say? He's like, oh, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll see your father in a few minutes or something. Like that. I'll wait around for him. I'm like, it's not, it's not exactly how it went but something along those lines he, yeah, he yeah. thought jordan was my kid yeah yeah exactly we're, we're eight years apart so anyways um moving right along we are another not. one here's another n scale question why don't we make everything in n scale at the same time we make it in ho i think we've answered this in almost every live stream but let's tell, let's tell them why why guys I don't know, boss. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know, whenever I'm on these things, you guys just like hang out and let me answer all the questions, right? I'm uh, wait. The end scale market is less than a quarter the size of the HO market. Yeah, simple as that. And not every product we do in HO can be done profitably in N. Mm -hmm. There are some cases where the tooling cost in N is almost exactly the same as the tooling cost in HO, and the unit cost is just a little bit less. But we can't charge you 330 bucks for an end scale engine. No one will buy it. Yeah, so uh, it's a smaller market and more price sensitive. Uh, because I want to say more price sensitive, but more unable to spend HO prices when the costs are very close to HO costs. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And wouldn't you also say they're actually more difficult to engineer than HO? They, oh, very. Right. So they're yeah, more yeah. time consuming on the design side. So uh, people are wondering if we're ever going to do the APTE, which is the British Advanced Passenger Train that tilts in N. And people are calling us saying, you have to do this in N, oh, and it has to tilt. It's like, hang on a second. It's got articulated bogies, right? And the engineering in the HO model took a year and a half to make it actually work. Because in the UK, you've got really tight radius curves in both double O and in, in N. Uh, to do it in N, like you can't just shrink down Double O model. Like it's much more difficult. <laughs> Shrink it, shrinkinator. Shrink uh, here's one for us, for you and me, Jason. Probably not the other guys as much, unless you're Star Trek fans. Ooh. Um, how do we feel about the return of Q? Uh, very excited. Yeah, very excited. It's been 27 years. I read it. Uh, uh, has, no, no, yeah. no. Yeah. Definitely not. He was in Voyager as oh, late so, as... Yeah, but in, in, in T with, with Picard, though. Uh, Q has been around. Um, yeah, yeah the, once or twice in, in I read an interview with Akiva Goldsman, uh, who is the show, one of co-showrunner, and he says that the character has evolved a lot, just like Picard has evolved. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, he showed up once in Deep Space Nine and got punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> 
Didn't he? He brought Riker to Voyager. I remember that. Yes, but then Riker was no. He didn't remember that afterwards. No, it's a shame. Yeah, it's I mean, like the Doctor's companion is Jamie and Zoe forgot their whole adventure with the Doctor. Yeah, Isn't that yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go back to trains for a second. Sure. How are the F fifty nine orders doing? Have we seen a big uptick in the last uh, since the last newsletter? I know we've been pushing them a little more since uh, since February March. The orders are better. Yeah, we still have two teams at risk, I believe. Yeah, the, most of the orders are Go Transit and MBTA. <laughs> yeah. MBTA. Most of the orders. They didn't own any F fifty. MBTA. Okay. Not MBTA. What's the one in Chicago? Metro. Metro. That's one. The, the okay. big, the biggest, the biggest orders are uh, are Go Transit and Metro. I'd, I'd like to say you were close enough, but you were not close at all. No, they both start with M, and they both end with A. And they're the same number of letters. I mean, come on. There's a reason just, you like Via. It's just the middle letters. It's spelled the same way forwards and back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or upside down for that matter. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, MBTA and Go Trans are like 80% of our sales. Stop saying MBTA. Sorry, Metra. <laughs> That's what I meant. You're fired. You can see John. I haven't had anything to drink today. <laughs> like... <laughs> to tell uh, maybe actually i think i should start drinking yeah maybe but uh, yes metro and go uh most of the other schemes are, are doing much better and are pretty much safe uh the, the no other... the, but the other schemes schemes are safe the only ones are the yeah. two uh, the the metro link delivery and the metro link later scheme yeah the, the metro link middle scheme is fine yeah um personally i really looking forward to the as delivered scheme but uh please please put some more orders in um, yeah the the, the metro link sort of lagging behind those just that just baffles me i don't understand that that's very strange very strange i mean especially that late scheme because those were running heck up until the last two years oh i photographed them in when i was in la i was riding the surfliner in 2019 and i, I was i caught them there yeah. uh the uh I, i'd say i don't know the numbers in front of me but i'd say metra has probably sold as many as all the metro link engines together and, and it's so weird because metro's only had them for what two years three years such a only have a handful yeah oh yeah so i don't know what it is i don't know what it is i'm not sure why la which has the second largest fleet in, on the planet why the sales would be so terrible mm -hmm. yeah and even out there in la they've had an x go unit so yeah mm -hmm. yeah they were still running up until uh yeah. early 2020 i think at least yeah. units they were Larry's yeah. truck, weren't they? I believe. You know what they were what? They were, they were owned by Larry's truck, weren't they? That one. No, GBRX, wasn't it? Something like that. I don't know who GBRX is, but... He's, he's a guy in uh, in Montreal. Is it the same one who owned the, uh, the ones well, that went out of Oh, that is? Okay. Because yeah, they, they're the ones that got uh, leased the Via. Right. Um, yeah, they would, they would run three units to Northern Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> two units on the train to, to Santerre and one unit on the train to John Kier. And they'd run together three units, four cars. Mm -hmm. And what was the top speed? 20? 30? <laughs> oh, uh, I think they got up to 30. Yeah. I rode I rode Edmonston on that route. Both ways. Mm. The, the sleeping car that we saved. I, I, I was, was going to say, I hope you broke, wrote it both ways. They didn't make you walk back, did they? No, I didn't go. I didn't come home, coach. I mean, I went to the both ways. Oh, oh, okay. And how many years later was it? You got to clean the poop chute. <laughs> ah, nineteen oh, that was, years later. That, that was me. <laughs> that, was, that was me in Orangeville about three. No, years twenty. Years twenty years later. Mm -hmm. And was, then, and then Jordan was up inside the roof, ripping it apart. Yeah, that was the roof. But there was one the the, the week that Gomez and I went up, and we're we're underneath the car in the rain in October, September, October, and we're cutting out the old steam lines and I'm like up in the truck and it's just right underneath the poop chutes. It was gross. So, But Jason had already cleaned them before you got there. Yeah, that, the poop chutes haven't been used in a long time. Don't worry. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah, I used to, on the Canadian, when before we had retention tanks, I would go towards the back of the train and open up the Dutch door and stick my head out until the Conductor came it's along and spray. closed the Dutch door on radio. I got him. It's Jason. And we'll tell him not to do it again. Uh, that really happened more than once. 
um, and and it, you feel a spray, okay? And the spray was the way that the bud toilets worked. The, the Pullmans just dumped it right on the track. The bud toilets mixed it with a chemical and then then dumped it on the track, and you got I got sprayed in the face. Well, that's yeah. just a lovely story. <laughs> That's why whenever we pulled into a station, the, the sleeping car attendant would open the door and then take a rag and clean the handrails because they're on the bottom of the trap door and they're getting sprayed the whole time. Here you go. Next. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, How did we get here? <laughs> right along. Um, actually, before we move along from the, uh, from the F-59s, uh, we, we hopefully will have some uh, bi-level coach samples pretty soon. We posted a couple of pictures over the last week or two so uh we'll we'll try and get some uh get those new samples and uh show you before we close the, so the the models themselves are ready but the circuit board's not so i'm hoping that maybe they can just send us some models and we can we'll bodge something dan will make something up for the circuit boards or, or mohan will we'll bodge something together to extend the lights working for the video well dan has nothing to do so we can just get him to yeah that's right yeah i have nothing to do just hey, yeah. nothing to do I don't have to paint these. <laughs> ah, you, can I, we show those off, please? Like we can we segue I, I have, into that because they look I so have, gorgeous. Uh, I have a, I have a folder of approved photos. If you give me one sec, talk away for a second while I pull these up. These are the first. man. Tell us about the cars. They ran everywhere on every track in North America and Europe. No, only on the car train. We need eight hundred <laughs> of them. It's actually, they 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 based mainly in Ontario. That's yep. Well, they ran from the Dane Mines to uh, Hamilton, Ontario, carrying uh, iron ore taconite pellets. So there's the short version and the long version. I don't think my camera's that good to pick up all the detail. Jordan, I'll show you better pictures. Got the photos going. That detail is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the short barrel barrel car here. And those top hatches open, don't they? No, not on the model. Oh, they don't? Okay. They look too clunky, so we just made them closed. But you can make yours open there, Matt. Yes, I could. <laughs> just need a hacksaw. In the real world, there was a rail in the unload or in the loading facility that contacted the rubber tires, and it was twisted. So as the train pulled through, it would open the doors, and then the twist in the rail was the other way when it left, and it would close the door. So Cool. Basically, the train could keep running as it was filling. Can you show us more pictures, please, Jordan? I can. There's the there's the two uh, the long and the short barrel car together. Mm -hmm. Shows you some of the different details and the, and the different lengths. Um, I've already ordered a lot. I've already ordered a lot of these. Ah, excellent. Um, these are actually pretty good for first samples. There's not a lot of uh, big adjustments that we need to do. They're no, gorgeous. No corrections I did was the coupler cut bar and the photo etch being changed to uh, nickel instead of brass. Yep. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, uh, that the, those, what is that? Those, those fins there. I remember when we got the drawing, you were, you were, we were almost ready to go ahead with a Fubi underframe. <laughs> and a redid it all. Yeah, and then we got, we got, ribs. we got blueprints. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're the stiffening ribs in between the bays. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? That's Matt. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually got the full slope sheet underneath the truck there as well. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. And, uh, lots of lots of uh, uh, wire parts under there too for uh, for the brake detail. Well, you've got the copper or the brass rods there. The actually the mechanism for unloading the the doors. Very nice. And you've got all your brake piping as well. Gorgeous. And uh, well, these are the uh, a Canadian prototype. Some of them did make them into the U.S. later on. Um, the majority of them found second yeah. lives. The big yeah. cars um, wound up on the West Coast working on the BNSF in some kind of concentrate service. And most of the little cars got the roofs cut off them and turned to ballast cars. Mm -hmm. Some went to Metro, I believe. Uh, yeah. There's also, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but there's a uh, the Chicago oh. Belt line got some. Yep, yep. There's a short line somewhere in New England that has a uh, very, literally only a few miles long, and they do some. Uh, well, we owe them a debt of gratitude because uh, the engineer of that train crawled down under the cars for us and actually took some measurements. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
I think this is I think this is one of the most beautiful freight cars we've ever made. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're so unique. They're. But look at the, look at the how, how fine the detail is on the doors. That's that's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Roof shot again. And you notice on the long cars they have a different uh, stanchion holding the tires than on the short car. Mm -hmm. Did that. You can even see the plungers on the the triangular gussets that hold the doors open. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And well the, done, Dan. The way we designed the car is the roof is a separate piece. So, yeah, Matt, we, is is your new freight car been re reviewed by the team yet? Yep. Yes, it has. Okay, so that one's ready to go into tooling. Not yet. There were a couple of revisions that needed to be made, and I would suspect after I get the next round of drawings, it should be ready after that. That one's been lit just. That one. Yeah, it's been lit. Will that be your first project that you that will finish that you did from the start? Correct. Nice. And without getting into specifics, this is a uh, old car, new car, modern car. It's a car. It's a car. Freight car. Freight car. Yeah. The oh, freight car. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. And it carries stuff. Lots of basically stuff. been building them since the 1900s to today. So it's one yeah, of you got a range. Variations. It's somewhere between then and now. Yeah. Yeah. How, how soon are we going to announce whatever it is, if that is? Probably Let's wait till we have samples, I think. What do you yeah. think, Matt? Should we announce it with samples? Or just draw I... Samples would be excellent. Um, actually, I was hoping to have samples by the time uh, the Spring Creek show came around at the end of July. So, end of July is it end of July this year. Correct, twenty fourth and twenty fifth. Back one. Yeah, hopefully we we'll see. We might pull that off. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yes, because I'd like to have them it at Spring Creek. So yeah, it depends on uh, on cash flow, but uh, we'll get we'll have something. Worst right. case scenario, we can get you a three D printed one. Yeah, definitely. Right. That okay. and nice posters of the renders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think if you notice with freight cars, we, uh, we, we we often announce them off drawings rather than waiting. Just because, like, this is a perfect example. These ore car samples arrived last Thursday. Right? Nice, beautiful. So these ore car samples arrived last Thursday. And... We can then say the order deadline is now May 17th. So that's a month away, right? Had we waited for samples, we couldn't have launched them until May 10th or whenever our newsletter goes out. And then we had the order deadline would have been like July or August. So by announcing them off drawings, which we think we can do with freight cars, people have seen our freight cars, they know the quality, then uh, we, can, we can have a really tight deadline after the samples arrive. So there you go. And uh, of course, these are all the uh, the paint schemes on this car. So we've got this, both the long and the short barrels in, uh, we've got CN, we've got the scale test car on uh, Terra Northland and the progressive scheme on the short cars. On the long cars, we've got the Chevron and uh, undecorated. Can you show the masterclass? I don't think people know about our masterclasses. I can, um, right here actually. We've got a whole masterclass on the website written by, uh, uh, yep. Bram Bailey, well-known Ontario Northland uh, expert and historian. So yeah, we got the whole. This is right, the whole thing right on our website here. Lots of photos, Bram's own photos. Can you show people how to go to find all our different master classes? Sure. It's in That's news cool. about right. Uh, news and uh, master classes. So if you go right here, and you see all the different master classes we've uh, we've put up. Um, Beauty. Yeah, we've got the uh, the H six uh, ten wheeler that nobody seems to be interested in, and we don't understand why. <laughs> but uh, we have three okay. pages of master classes. Yes, yeah. So pretty much, we're trying to do this from. We haven't done it for all of our products, for but for a lot of our uh, our newer projects, we've been we've been doing master classes as a place. I think it's important. Master class is important for like the barrel or car because it's a unique car. And also, if we're bringing out a model that, like, say, oh, I've got that already. I've already got uh, uh, an FP9. Well, no, you don't. You have a bogus FP9A. And you can see our master class and find out why. Excuse me. Bless you. 
allergy season. Yes, it is. It is. So, yeah. So that's the barrel work cars. And oh, uh, order deadline is coming up. So May seventeenth is the order deadline for those cars. Um, I know Dan. I don't know if you're. Are you are you going to be working on a, a painted sample for those, or are we? Do you think you'll have time for that? Oof, time. Oh yeah. yeah. Time should have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then you, you'll do a video, Jordan. Yeah, for sure. Video so, superstar. Some time, time between now and... Uh, and uh, Can I just say that, that Jordan now gets asked for his autograph when he goes out in public, so... Uh, yeah, one, one time. He one is time. he is truly a superstar. Let me guess who it was. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't cost that much. No, no. <laughs> uh, show the other May deadline. It's on under... No, okay, or don't. Well, I am, but I've got to find the find the page first. What is our other main deadline? The uh, the new look bus and end scale. Ah, yes. Let me pull that up here. Another what's the, what's the order deadline for the PAs? I don't think we mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, that, that was what we started off with. Where were you? <laughs> I thought I was email. right here, but I guess not. He was sending an email to the factory. He no, he was over at the <laughs> after live stream by mistake. <laughs> Oh, that's Tuesday. <laughs> that was yesterday. Yeah, still got a link. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the surprise for them, I guess. Yeah, like I said, awesome. I got a link. Here I am. <laughs> Hang out in your come in your Rapido swag. Just say, just like do the do the swag thing. <laughs> that could actually be fun. We should arrange that. We should arrange that with them on purpose. Have have them photobomb one of ours. We photobomb one of theirs. Well, like now you've given it away. We do that at shows. We stand in each other's booths. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Only, yeah. Only when Josh is left alone in the booth. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was nasty. Those <laughs> those buses look amazing. I just got to tell they you, do. they absolutely do. There's never been an N scale bus this detailed ever. No, no. Uh, Most N scale buses have, don't even have flush windows. We have flush windows. We have really cool side when uh, the uh, side mirrors. We've got. Full underbody. An accurate, accurate, accurate underbody, underbody chassis because we own the bus. And I've, I, I, I have like a, I have 143rd, I have 148. You turn them over and it's totally made up. Yeah. If there's any. Totally deep. bogus. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on, you couldn't just find a photo and just get something remotely correct. You remember yeah. how we got it though? We found that photo of the speed bus when it was dumped on its side after the movie. And yes, we took, we the, took the, the, stills. What? the what bus? The, the, that Sorry, the, the, the fast bus. bus. Very fast the bus. bus. Very fast bus. bus. They, they might be watching, so we gotta. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a lot of movie executives who uh, who, who watch our live streams yeah. and hope that we're gonna we're gonna they break some kind speed. of trademark. <laughs> hey, you've had some, you've had your own list of uh, media uh, uh, requests for your uh, your model train video. Yeah, and yeah, you know, actually, that, the response that's been amazing. It has. So. Can you? Celebrity. Let, let's go through these buses first, and then yeah. I, I, it'd be cool if you can show a, a clip of that, like, of that video, the view from the train. I could probably do that. Um, but yeah, let's look at the buses first. So, here we go. Those are the buses. Who wants to talk about buses? We have, we have two actual fully liveried buses right so n scale is really really small and i just said earlier for those of you who weren't here that in ho the, the factory complains that the, the, the they take too long to make because of the, all the fine printing so uh because then what we did is uh in order to make this affordable otherwise you want to have it retail around 100 bucks or whatever uh we just did generic things where we do the painting for you but you can put on the logos yourself it saves us the hassle of having to get license agreements for everything um, and, uh, and, and, and end scale, it still looks great. However, there are two paint schemes that we have full livery. So one of them is that a very fast bus from Santa Monica number 2525. So that one is obviously our biggest selling HO bus. So the, a lot of people want it for end. But then the other one is go transit because we have a very good relationship with, uh, with Metrolinx, uh, who own go transit. And, uh, so we decided to make a, a, a go bus with the go transit logo. Might as well take advantage of that. So there you go. Uh, the rest of them are, uh, are will look like your different city uh, things. But if you want to add decals or decals in Canada, it's up, up to you. Uh, we also have, uh, this is something that came up a couple times. So I think at some point, it was either in the newsletter or somewhere, we said 
if you have any other ideas for uh, or if you want to do a custom bus, uh, send us an email. And I think we forgot to mention that it has to be more than two custom buses. <laughs> yes, three, 300 is your minimum for a custom bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had, I think we had a couple of people email and said, I saw, your, I saw your, your comment about doing custom buses. I would like two painted for Miami. <laughs> no. no it's it, it's it's gorgeous and the lights work by the way there's a there's they a do. circuit board inside the headlights and tail lights work and uh and it uh it plugs to any any 12 volt to 9 12 volt power supply yep yep yeah you just get those little uh those 9 volt battery clips that you get from uh from the uh, they all come with ac on them or does some of them come without some with AC, some without. But I think the uh, generics. That's a good question. I think the AC is separate, where the people can apply it themselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the only one that's going to have AC is going to be Go Transit, right. straight off the bat. We should we should put that on the website, eh? Actually, are most coming? So all of these ones are they coming with the AC? These are all AC products? in the. We're going to put AC in a poly bag. We're not install rear AC. AC unit in poly bag. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it says that there. Oh, we're yeah, awesome. there it is right there. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> ahead of the ball, or ahead of the game. Beauty. All right. So, what we're, we're, what else do we want to talk about? We want to talk. We mentioned something else before. Oh, you want to see your video? You talk, is it possible to show that? I can. I think I can. Well, I'm not sharing screen right now. I don't think, but I will set that up. What you can uh, do is, if you go to the YouTube and just skip ahead. Yeah. You don't see me talking. Skip ahead to the part where I'm on the train. There might be a couple people that uh, that haven't seen it yet, so let me let me get it booted up. It's only been it's only been viewed a quarter million times. Yeah. Hold on, I gotta mute it because it's gonna run through all the ads. Yeah. So once it's once, then it's like skip ahead to the the, the train part and let's and I, we can give running commentary on it. Hold on one sec. Hold on, Dan. Why'd you mute yourself? We want to hear you. How can you do running commentary if you're muted? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's your answer. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Okay. Well, we can't hear it, though, on your thing. I can't hear it. Can you hear it? No. I can hear it. There it is. There it is. Right. So this is this is a view with the GoPro on, from on board the train on my layout. And I dropped in the, um, the interior of the full-size train in my basement, the coach. So the GoPro was just riding on a flat car or something? Well, I, I, gondola is what I had. I cut the sides okay. off. Oh, my gosh. Don't tell Darnell. Um, so this <laughs> is Brockville Yard. A couple of brass vans. Hobbycraft box cars. It's all I had that was weather. And Jordan pointed out that we... It's like no Rapido freight cars on here. <laughs> we I needed something uh, weather. We should make some uh, Canadian 40 footers. We should. All right, this is, this is my favorite part. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, your 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 noise cancellation is canceling the whole noise of the turbo. So we we didn't hear that now. Way to go! Way to go, Zoom. Well, right, so if you watch this, so the great thing is there's lots of background noise on this, so you can hear what it sounds like in a train right now. Like the the drinks cart's coming by, and you can hear the rattling of the drinks cart, and there's people talking. It's blow it blows the horn for the crossing. <laughs> Yeah, I can't hear anything on it, Jordan. Noise cancellation is killing it. There's the horn. So we're crossing over here onto the north track. That John Greggs built that. That that everyone who's been to Brockville knows that building. Mm -hmm. It's right across from the station, and that's a gorgeous model. John built that, and then I built this is the, this is Brockville Station built that in the laser. How many and times? Then, uh, three times. That was my third attempt. That was my third attempt. The second attempt was straighter. The third attempt has a gap underneath. And then you've got there's a CM, the Brockville side. And then you've got the units for the Montreal section tuning along behind. And the audio, if you watch it on YouTube, it's not no no noise canceling zoom. John built that building too, by the way. You can hear the the 567 and the steam from the B unit and it's, and his bell. It's just it's cool. By the way, we still have FP nines. Anyone's we do. We do have FP9s. Not in that scheme, though. That scheme is sold oh. out. It's in Via and the CN Black, Green, and Yellow. Hey, look at that Tagger trailer. That's a gorgeous Tagger trailer there. And just off scene is a gorgeous kiln 
full covered in rust that you built also. So there you go. Okay, we can stop sharing now, Jordan. It's good. All right. What did you do? You took a, a still of the inside of your real train. Yeah, and then lounge. exactly. And then for reflection, um, I went outside the car and photographed in mm -hmm. and then rotated the reverse that uh, to a mirror image and then put it like inside the window at 9% opacity. So it looked like the, and then I went and deleted some stuff because you wouldn't be so clear, right? Right. Um, and it just looked like the reflection of the window. And that, I think the reflection and the the ambient sound is what is what made it go viral. Yeah. Uh, it's just that, because most people put the camera on the front because most people want to be the engineer. Yeah. I've never had a desire to, to, to drive a train. I've never had desire. Um, and uh, I like being it's pretty cool when you get the chance, though. Mm -hmm. Portland, that's true. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was in the I was in the cab on the train that the old steam heated train from Churchill for about eighty miles, mm -hmm. and that was my first time in a locomotive cab. I was tw almost twenty one, and it w it was pretty neat to be up there. We had a meet with uh, uh, some G forties. <laughs> well, when we were in Portland scanning the PA, we got to run the SW one switcher mm -hmm. how far did we go maybe a couple of miles a couple of miles down to the down to the engine shed and back the guy says sit down we start throttling up and we're leaving the museum we're going out into the public we're hitting grade crossings whoa bicycles across the paths in front of us and i'm like oh man what happens if i hit somebody <laughs> <laughs> i'm just freaking out yeah, yeah that, would, that wouldn't be good for anybody no i've got some throttle time this weekend up at the monticello railroad museum Oh, awesome. So awesome. They, they have an FPA4, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. It's um, Jason's favorite paint scheme. They've, uh, they're using Ray. the uh, the Chicago and Illinois Midland locomotives that they recently acquired for this weekend. So that's awesome. I uh, go out and do stuff down there. <laughs> for my birthday once, uh, when I lived in England, my parents got me a drive a diesel thing. But then, for whatever reason, it got canceled. Uh, like the, the the railroad wasn't holding it that 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 year or whatever. So uh, my parents instead funded me to take a sleeping car to go to go to London, go out for dinner, and I had to take a sleeper to Penzance. At which point, I boarded a, a an HST cross country HST. It was Virgin at the time, and went all the way to the Scottish border. <laughs> Well, right, it says southwest coast to Scottish border. Got off the train, got on my next train back to Birmingham. So I spent the whole day. The Virgin trains had 15 pounds all day, anywhere you want to go. Nice. And uh, that was fabulous. But yeah, that was being a passenger, obviously. I got my. Right, any more questions? We've been chatting. I got any one more? picture I want to. I'm going to share them. We'll do a whole bunch of questions. It's going to be that Monticello FBA 4, isn't it? It is not. It is uh, not even not even close. I showed you this picture last week. That's me in sixty four thirty seven. Oh, gorgeous! And you gotta love that shirt. I had you were so cute, Jordan. What happened? That's a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I it's not creepy. When, it's not creepy when you're a father. I have three. I have three little ones of my own. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was not so little anymore. Yeah, the oldest is taller than I am. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, look, look at that shirt. That's awesome. I don't know what I was thinking, but it was 1994. So. I thought you were in Mexico. Something like that. Well, it was big at the time, I guess. Anyway, let me go back and. Uh... Driving a bus is much more fun than driving a train. I got to tell you. You know what's more no. fun than driving a bus is being a passenger on a bus as you do an S curve at Kingston Station. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> did, is, did, so is, your, is your shoulder pop back into place yet? <laughs> Every time it rains, it just aches. <laughs> <laughs> yet, Dan got mortally wounded on the bus and did not call workers' comp. You twisted your ankle and I you called I, work, workers' comp. I fell okay? off a Way to go, Hoser. We were shut okay. down for three years because of you. Well, okay, well, when our, difference. when our operations manager and our COO has to carry me back to my office because I can't walk. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah, come on. Poor baby. And no, it's your fault for stepping on that one foot ladder. The, the tiny violin. You want some cheese with that wine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I did at Santoff uh, in, in Lincolnshire in England. They have a trolley bus museum. And, and I, I did the drive a trolley bus for a day, right? Mm-hmm. So you know how our bus drives, Dan? Like you, you held to the metal and you slowly creep up, you know, <laughs> to the max out of 55 miles an hour. So I get into this, this, this old lo- this trolley bus from Newcastle or something like that. And, and, he's, 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 and I'm used to driving our GM fishbowl, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of driving the trolley bus, <laughs> and the, I gave the instructor, he's like, Jason, watch your speed. Jason, Jason, Jason. <laughs> He was screaming because I was apparently headed. It's like, wow, this thing goes really quickly. Like you just you, you turn put on whatever you call it. It's not called a throttle. And like you just you shoot and you and you coast. All right. So our bus take a foot off the gas, and even if you're going 80 miles an hour in like 100 yards, you're dead stop. Yeah. <laughs> just before we're coming we across that. Manitoba, I'm driving, yeah. and we go down that <laughs> hill. And then all of a sudden I start creeping up and we get up to 60 miles an hour and there's the 18 wheeler in the fast lane and I'm getting right up to the cab and the guy goes, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. And then I start going, <laughs> well, speaking, speaking of bus stories. So a couple of weeks, it was last week or two weeks ago, I had this great idea for a video. So I, I bought a house and I'm moving into it on Saturday. And Yay! It was a great idea to, uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to film a video. So I'm like, we're going to get the bus. We're going to film it. We're going to go to my house. We're going to load all well, the old place. We're going to load up all the furniture. We're going to drive to my new house in Peterborough, unload everything. Jordan, and, you're getting the same look again. No, but that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, Jason it, was sitting in the, in, the, in the meeting, and he was not smiling. He was not moving. He was not blinking an eye. He just, like now? There, he just sat there staring at me for like 30 seconds. Well, <laughs> well, this is the point. first time I've heard of this. You were there. You were in the meeting. In the meeting. You just went <laughs> dead fan. Like, what? Really? <laughs> yeah. He frozen. He just didn't realize it. Yeah. No, I, I think I was working on a model and I didn't even know you were talking to me. Oh, you were staring directly at the screens. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe your camera froze, but I thought it was a good idea. He calls me after and he goes, I don't think that went over too well, do you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the first I've heard of this. That'd been a great video. But I would not be doing any of the lifting. I just drive. But that was the point. I said you could just drive. You wouldn't have to do anything, and and you just and you didn't. You were just staring at the screen. This is the first I've heard of this. I must have been fro- like I, I must have been frozen. So what are you doing on Sunday then? <laughs> <laughs> I can I can drive you on Sunday. I've, I've actually already got it. I booked a truck. So that's ah, fine. you booked a truck. Next well, it, time. It is, next it is time, like we're not supposed to be in a confined space for an extended no. period of time together. It was it would it was a funny story though. So. I don't. Ah, okay. Whatever. Anyway, let's go back to answering some questions because we haven't done that in a little while. Uh, Did I show what I'm working on now? Hang on. Is, do you have a shed? Oh, it's a transformer. No, this is a substation in Brockville on Park Street. The substation's accurate. This this the actual electrical stuff is totally made up. <laughs> I just made it up. Somebody told you about it too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. They want so it's. I'm very proud of my first chain link fence ever. Looks really good. Thank you. Thank you. First one ever. I did, uh, I'll show you. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh. <laughs> almost, almost that would have been really bad. Okay. So I made these um, things on the laser, this jigs, and they're on 10 foot spacing, but I also have like five, six, and eight here. And I just put the brass, 0.7 mil and one mil brass, 0.1 mil for the thick one post and 0.7. And I just soldered it in the jig. And then I put on uh, toll material, and uh, there you go. And Dan, I ordered a, a huge roll from Amazon, like you suggested. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, so there you go. Uh, it was what my first chain link fence. What's that? What is the material? It's it's like bridal veil material. Bridal it's called toll. T U L L E. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I got like a I got a six inch by a hundred yard roll for eighteen bucks on Amazon. So it means you can get it in the states for four ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> all right um let's go to some questions then uh will the circuit boards for the new steam heater cars fit the original releases will they be available for purchase um we have don't. not ordered extra available but we probably could at some point yeah but would there be a lot of work necessary to make that fit it's not designed for a drop-in fit and i honestly haven't seen the the drawing maybe bobby 
knows. I haven't seen a drawing comparing the new design interior to the guts to the old design. So I, I just can't answer. I think uh, anyone who is determined could probably do it. Yeah. You'd be soldering yeah. wires. To we them. often get we often get questions that that are 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 very well meaning questions by people who just don't have a lot of modeling skills. I got to tell you, Dan Darnell is the living proof of anything is possible. Okay, you put you if you if you put your what I mean is you're an incredible modeler and you can you can create something out of nothing. Do you have any any of your current projects there? Or let me, should I show them your, your trailer and stuff? What do you got? Beauty. But so so Dan will will like turn one thing into another. He will he will modify he will touch up he will you know uh let me show off some of the stuff you did here hang on i'm really a little wonky now there it is hey it's just weird again this, this gets a lot of comments oh the van gorgeous uh -huh. just gorgeous that's the trident isn't it yep yeah go. except it looks really good here as opposed to looking you know i won't say anything but stunning Okay, and you've got you did the rust pencil on it and everything. Like it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And so when people ask questions like, "Can you fit this and that?" Yeah, you can. It may not be a drop in, but you can definitely do it. Yeah, it may I'm need some double sided tape. One. What's that? They K stuff. Kerosene. So it gives you that uh, dirty fuel wash down the side of fuel tanks. Where do you get all this stuff? Military modelers, streaking and griming fluid. Okay. Dan, next time you're out buying supplies, can you buy a full set from me? I'll pay you back, please. Uh, that would be probably about 300 bucks. Go for it. I'll these sell like, an extra uh, diesel. These are like 15 bucks a bottle. They're gorgeous. There's a new one. Elasta Putty. Hmm. And basically, it's a reusable paint mask. Basically, you pull it out. It's like a rubberized putty and you can peel it and stick it on the windows of your engines before you weather, weather seriously you let off and then just knead it with your fingers and reuse it again and again it's not a one-time shot that's amazing what's the difference between that and this really cheap blue tack that i because that's a one-shot deal oh no i think you could oh yeah I'll maybe get plugged with the paint probably right I bet that that AK stuff is blue tack that's been dyed. No, because it, it'll actually snap. Remember, like silly putty. It's more like yeah. silly putty. You'd pull it and then it would just snap clean. This will yeah. be. Oh, okay. That's I bet cool. you it is silly putty in some form. <laughs> well, you test it on some newspaper. <laughs> Pick up the comics. <laughs> well, moving uh, moving along to the next question. Uh, got one person asking if all of the Canadian add-on sets are coming in. Not only are they coming, they're here. They came with the sets. So I actually have them right here. So first off, we have the Skyline car. There's the packaging there. So those are shipping out with the sets. And we have the three packs. So we have the add-on set. So that's got the, uh, what's that in there? That's the coach, the chateau, and the manor. Yeah, see. Let me so see. Lift that up a bit more, I guess. There's that. Three pack for that and the prestige bilingual set. packaging. Yep, there's the prestige set. That's probably the best. Oh, one. can you op open that up? That I, I want to see that. There, and we'll show you the chateaus. Right, Glacier Park, right here. There we How's go. look? Beautiful. Go right, right up, right up to the camera. Let's beauty it's a little bit fuzzy but you get the idea yeah no the real thing's fuzzy too <laughs> when you get your your canadian it's all like out of focus yeah it took, that was a, that was a lot of extra work to make it like that either that or you might just need a new prescription so those prestige cars have never been done in nature we never did those nature oh. nice bowl roof, like do you know room. what the next question is Such. when is it coming in ho scale <laughs> not anytime soon <laughs> that's, the, yeah, that's always our, uh, our number one question um, pretty much every facebook post live stream everything when is it coming in n scale so 
Yeah, so there you go. The inscalers got a bonus this time. Actually, yeah, I, I did the uh, I, I did a post for the B thirty six T shirts and hoodies and, uh, and all the swag, and uh, some couple people posted, "When are they coming in N scale?" So I'm like, "The T shirts or the locomotives?" <laughs> <laughs> when are the T shirts coming in N scale? Awesome. Yes, definitely. Mark, yeah, you're not asking many questions here because I was talking about. Yeah, you know what? I'm telling you, like w- the three of us have been totally on task with these answering questions. Okay, we've been totally focused, question. and you're just want you're talking about buses, you're talking about T-shirts, Star you're talking Trek. about Star Trek. It was a question Dude. from a customer. <laughs> Where are the that on pack? So there they are. All right, then here's one for you. When are you uh, making e sleepers and uh, Pullman coaches again? Uh, it wasn't Pullman coaches. He said coach. Oh, wow. Um, coaches. yes, uh, we're finding that we can, it's very hard to get more than two shipments a year out of that factory. Mm-hmm. So, uh, hopefully in the next couple of years, That'd be nice. hopefully, hopefully you know, nice fundraising Edmonton's maybe one day. Yes. Fundraising Edmonton's with, with misspelt name on the end door. Absolutely. Where is it? Is it misspelled on the door? The end door has no D in second D. It says Edmundston. And the oh, side is Edmundston. I never. That's why we didn't do it when we did an HO. We I deliberately chose it before we bought the car. I deliberately chose not to do Edmundston as one of the cars because I knew that people would complain that we got one of the spellings wrong. Um, okay, anyway, we're getting a couple of questions about uh, a lot of incoming products. So why don't I share the, uh, the the production schedule very quickly? We'll go over some of the stuff that's on the way. Pull that up here. <laughs> so. Stuff that's coming in right now. Scroll down a bit here. So yeah, GLAs are in production, the X72s. Uh, what's on the way right now? Oh, the later phase F40s. Are We actually posted some photos of that on Facebook and Instagram uh, over the last couple of days. They're in the paint shop. So they'll be coming probably mid They're supposed to leave the factory end of May, I think. Yeah, they're getting pretty close. They're getting pretty close. Uh, the first batch of SW1200s is on the water. So that's yeah. uh, great, uh, great Northern Milwaukee, uh, the SP units. Uh, what else do we have in there? PR, PR, yeah. New Haven. New, New Haven. Haven. Um, so they're Carolina. all on the water. Um, they're coming uh, in about, what, about three weeks, three, four weeks? Less. They'll, they'll arrive probably in just over two weeks, but it'll take us a, uh, oh, no, no, they're not going by the fast service. Now, mid-May. Um, so those are on the way. And then the second batch, what are we looking at? Probably end of June? Uh, second batch, no earlier than that. The second batch should arrive two to three weeks after the first batch. Okay, very good. Yeah. And uh, all the end scale stuff. Actually, we've been uh, we've been moving along pretty good with that. We've got the uh, the F40s, the Horizons and Comets, I guess are all kind of early in production right now. We see, I actually posted- And the FP9As are in production too. Yep, yeah. So that's all going to come- probably third quarter is what we've got right now so painting, yeah third quarter third quarter sounds right from hopefully most of them yeah and of course everyone who's thinking we're wondering third quarter is uh summer so july through the end of september uh, we've kind of reworded how we do things because we we're trying to put things in quarters now because when we say winter people can't tell if that's the eight days there are winter. only yeah. 10 days of winter in december yeah yeah yet everybody thinks when we say winter, we're talking about December. Somebody actually said once, so we, we had a product that was that said uh, a winter. Um, and it was already shipped from the factory. And it said, uh, 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 in transit to the, to, to the warehouse. And they said, is this really going to be in transit for a full year? It said winter, <laughs> arriving winter. So, <laughs> but anyway, right. that, that kind of... Uh, I don't understand. Like for the people who think winter is December, what is January, February, March? <laughs> is that a new season we just don't know about? Like will ring, ring. I don't know. We're just, we're just going to call things quarters from now on. So that yes. makes things a little bit more more straightforward. Um, but as you can see, we do have a lot of stuff uh, coming. We oh the the meat reefers have they left the factory yet? They're waiting for couplers. They've okay. been they've been finished for the last three weeks. Oh, okay. So as soon as the couplers, the couplers are supposed to be there today. 
Okay. So they'll leave the factory next week. So we'll be seeing those in about five, six weeks. Six, six weeks, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, and everything else is coming along nicely. Haven't seen anything of the comets yet, but uh, in HORN, but I think that's 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 well underway. So yeah, lots of stuff, lots of good stuff coming very soon. Uh, oh, and uh, turbo Langer samples. We should have those in about six weeks. First, what? Turbo Langer sample. That's in tooling right now. Uh, yeah, about six weeks sounds right. Yeah, six, six, seven. It depends how long it takes them to put them together. And then Dan's got to paint them. And then we got the RS18U and RS18. Those samples are supposed to be here in a couple of weeks. I don't know where they are. Yep. And the buy levels. The buy levels are also, uh, we, we, these are all sitting at the factory. And the GP20 tank and then sample. The end scale tank. Yeah, that's, the, that'll be the, that's not sitting at the factory right now. These are all sitting in the factory. Yeah. Already starting some plans for the RS18 uh, U video. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get that. Kind we of should thing. do a separate video. Like one should be the RS18 U and the RSC14 and a separate one with the RS11s because. Americans don't give a flying fado about the RS-18U and the RC-14. Oh, yes, they do. Seriously? The RS-18U? They'll go crazy it? for it. Mm -hmm. Really? They ran all on the DNH. Oh. They were all right. All over New England. Yeah. New England. New York. Well, maybe they can order it along with the, the seven RSC-14s we've sold. <laughs> well, on that, on that note, that leads into the next question. Uh, after the RSC 14s, because we have the trucks, are we doing the uh, RSC, what is it, the 24s? No, we're not. There were four of them, and they, they didn't last very long, cool as they were. What's the other one, the RSC 13? RSC 3s? Who are the ones that CN had? Yeah, the RSC 3. Well, no. where, where they got the trucks from? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no? <laughs> and that's no from me, Alex. All right, then. Well, I guess that puts that to bed. Uh, if you charge me $330 for an H1B and N scale, I would gladly pay it. Okay. If we did an H1B and N scale, it would be north of 500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and probably a uh, warranty nightmare. So maybe, depending on how solid it's built. So. Um, well, David probably. You're trying that. to save there, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, hang on a second, Jordan. Are you saying that our our, our models have warranty problems? What? I didn't say Is that, that what you're saying? Are you are you you it's trash it's, talking Rapido products? Get that own right away for all the HO guys trying to fix N scale stuff. Uh -huh. Repair guys are N scale guys. They are N scale modelers. <laughs> okay, I'll mention that to Robin. <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, Speaking of that, I, my son and I watched the original Muppet movie the other day. It's not, it's not that good. <laughs> the newer ones are better. All right, then. Did he just call you a Muppet? <laughs> no, he called me a lot of things over the years, but I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, like I think dog. that's actually well suited. Can we make a Muppet, Jordan? I think that's that'd be awesome. Thing. You can have them in your videos, Jordan. You can have I Muppet know, Jordan in your videos. I don't know how to respond to that yet, so... Um, I think that one's sticking. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, Matt, start Googling custom Muppets. <laughs> I don't have to. My sister's profession. She knows She knows who to call. I got this. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Uh, where are the 3500 series M420s? And why are you making them in BC Rail? Oh, Dan can answer that. <laughs> 3500s have not been designed yet. When Jason lets me design them, I will. The BC Rails, there's just so many differences on them. I don't know whether it's ever feasible to do them or not. We'd like to do them. Um, that and the PNWs. Again, the truck spacing is different. Steps are completely different. It's a lot of tooling changes for us. So. It's an all-new locomotive. It's, all we can reuse is the trucks and gearboxes. Yeah, because even the cab faces are different and it's a lot of work to change them and make them yeah, yeah. Right, I don't know whether we'd ever see a profit on it or not here's the thing has there been a buzz about the m420 like yeah. because we released it we sold out of it but i haven't heard much about it like if people, well, guys people are modifying them left and right oh yeah 
A lot of guys are actually building 3500s and doing all the, uh, uh, on some of the Facebook groups, you can see it. They're doing all the, the vent mods and everything. The 3500 has legs to mm -hmm. do the tooling changes and whatnot. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, you get the North American paint scheme, the later uh, later paint scheme. Mm -hmm. About a handful of units. I'm not sure how many actually got that. Was it only a couple? I think I've got six numbers that got it. Oh, okay. That's well, not too bad. But... Um, the BC Rails, I'd love to do it. I just don't know whether we'd ever see the figures we'd need. Mm -hmm. I think even if we took advance orders and said, you know, we'll make it, we get enough, I think we'd have to sell something like essentially as many as the CNs in order to make it work. Yeah. And then what do you do about the B in it? Right. That's, that's another thing. Yeah. 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 It's the same reason, really, we didn't do the RS 18s for BC. Because essentially, the majority of them were built late enough in life. They're actually closer to an Elko RS-32 with the taller hood doors in them and whatnot. I mean, they did have a few that matched our model, but not to the numbers that they did of the later ones. Right. Um, why don't you get started on the 3500 design? Sure. <laughs> right after. <laughs> Add it to your list. Right after that other project. We have a PR project. project. Project meeting tomorrow, don't we? Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. No, 10 o'clock tomorrow. 10 o'clock tomorrow. No, but our meeting does start at 9.30. So. No, that's the, the Monday meeting starts Monday at 9.30. Monday starts at 9.30. I thought that was on Thursday. Uh, no. Nope. Who's on first? Exactly. Read your emails, Jordan. Okay. Next question. Next. Uh, what else do we want to talk about here? Oh, here's an interesting question. Have uh, we experienced any uh, delays with the container shortage due to the Suez incident? Uh, we've had delays due to container shortages that have nothing to do with Suez. It was long before Suez. Okay. Um, there was a, there has been a container shortage in China for the last several months. Mm -hmm. So we had, uh, I know that a couple of shipments got, were held up for a few days in some cases longer we actually had to to pay for uh a faster service i think it was on our was it the 420s it might have been no it was something i can't remember what it was, it was something we paid for a faster service mm -hmm. might have been the 420s uh because the delays were just really it was very very long stuff was arriving here and just sitting waiting for a train spot for two weeks yeah, so I remember sitting in, was it Prince Rupert for like two weeks or something like that, just waiting? Yeah, yeah, stuff sits, comes and sits. Yeah. yeah. That's right. It's very free. Shipping, everything's, everything's turned on its head right now, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, co units, cost of materials in China has gone up in some cases by 30, 40% since last year. Mm -hmm. Right? There seems to be a shortage of everything. I just don't understand why, because everyone's working, factories are open, Yeah. stuff is shipping. I heard that IKEA kitchens are now like delayed until the end of the year next year. Really? If you, if you order, if you have an, an, an or an IKEA kitchen, it's not in stock right now. You're waiting until the like, end of the year next year. It's a long wait. Yeah. There's a lumber shortage. Mm -hmm. There's there's definitely a lumber shortage. You seen the cost of lumber? Holy yeah. Moses! Uh, we had yeah, uh, just like layout room here. That layout. We're building the layout in the outside your office there. Yeah, way to go, Hoser. You couldn't use the crap we had in the back and go buy new stuff. We used a lot um, of stuff. So, so I had the, the layout where I'm sitting now uh, was a, a lower floor, and I had uh, my contractor raise it. So it's the whole room is on one level, and he put down that vinyl plank flooring, which is great. He paid almost 30 bucks a sheet for OSB. Mm -hmm. Last time I bought OSB, it was 12 bucks. Imagine building a house now. <laughs> Holy crow. Like at the prices are crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pressure treated. Pressure treated is like three, four times the price. Mm -hmm. oh, it's it's insane. Well, even just buying a house. I just went through that and getting in a bidding war with 18 other people that all want the same property. Well, it's that's why fun. you moved like 500 miles from Toronto. It's 102 kilometers. <laughs> Jordan lives in another time zone. It's going to be a real pain of a commute for him, I'll tell you. Wait till winter hits. <laughs> I'm still going to be in the office three or four days a week. 
that have been them. So you have to go. What was, remember Mike used to drive around in that ancient white Lincoln? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, boat. you got to get one. If you drive from Peterborough, you got to go get yourself like a 1992 Lincoln. And drive that to the Mike, Mike McGratton? Yeah. Yes. The broken shocks. I didn't know he had a Lincoln. <laughs> it just does his... <laughs> well, technically, uh, te technically, the Crown Vic's on the same platform as the uh, Lincoln Town Cars. So, there you go. Uh, uh, there you go. So I think it, we have to get a, a, uh, a vintage car, another one, for the office. Another? What? <laughs> Seriously. Well, we have a vintage. We have a, a vintage Kia minivan. That's. Uh, uh, oh no, Chris is taking that. Chris, Chris is taking that, and then, uh, <laughs> and then Chris is taking the taxi too. So. He's been taking that for a while now. Yeah, well, yeah, it's COVID, bad weather, whatever. So he's gonna take all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I think I think it's it's we gotta think about getting like I don't know like a, nineteen eighty Mercury or something like that. No, no, let's get a fire truck. No, we're gonna put it your house. Park it in your driveway. It would fit. Neighbors wouldn't like it, but and you know I like American uh, full frame rear wheel drive V eight cars. So my grandmother had one of those two, a two door white Lincoln with maroon interior, nineteen eighty. Not Lincoln, uh, Mercury. I can't Did remember I tell what, you what which, I took my driving it? test on. Go on. Nineteen seventy seven four door Lincoln Town Car. Ooh, <laughs> we show up at the DMV <laughs> with it, and my dad standing in the parking lot. And the instructor goes, is that your dad? Yeah. Is this his car? Yeah. Take it around the block and park it. That's it. <laughs> Drive it around and park it. <laughs> well, I just went out around the block, back in. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I took my test in Brantford, Ontario, because back then the waiting list in Toronto was like That's... two months. Brantford was a week. I took my test in Brantford. So I drove the Calais on the 401 to Brantford. Um, and, uh, and then I get, so I've been now been driving for the last two hours. The guy gets in as I start driving and he says within 30 seconds, watch your speed. I was already speeding. <laughs> well, my first driving test was down off a of warden in South of Eglinton there where the CN yard was. Yeah. Yeah. So I go down and the guy says, make a left turn here. And it's right on Hymas Avenue paralleling the yard. So I go over and get back to the thing and he goes, you failed. I looked at him, failed? He says, yeah, you failed to observe the railway crossing. You did it <laughs> both ways. Or so what would you like to know about that crossing? It was paved over in 1974. Was three cabooses sitting to the left and I read off the numbers to him. There's the abandoned boxcar on the north side that hasn't moved in 10 years. You're a real smart aleck. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Went in reassigned for the test to do it a week later and get down there and then I met the guy for the Lincoln. All right. How did That's you fail excellent. the test? Oh, I know how you failed. It was Joe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is that, Any more questions, Jordan? Because we can that, just shoot the breeze all night. Yeah, well, one more. But I was going to say, is that like your uh, your bus test with your, I have two working doors? When the doors fell out of the bus? <laughs> Uh, okay. okay, let's just. I want. I want to. I want to put for the record. Oh, by the way, I gotta get. I got a letter. I gotta get a medical test for my my bus license. So, I went and got my bus license, and I had to write do the the written test, and it oh, was hard there. as anything. And I was answering questions about how many hours you've worked and timing out, and all this. You know, what what lights on your license plate? All this stuff, like crazy, right? And then Dan writes his test two weeks later. In the interim, they announced. We have a severe school bus driver shortage. Yeah, they were just Please giving them all. <laughs> and write the test to become a school bus driver. So Dan gets questions like, what do you do at a red sign that says stop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, even better, though, because you took the air brake test with the guy. And you yes. Oh, it's a breeze. You get in the truck and you sit there and you just tell them what the buttons are and blah, blah, blah. So I go down, I get in the truck and I'm sitting there and I go, so this button does this and this button does this and this. He says, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm telling you how the air brakes work. What makes you think I want to do that? I said, well, my boss just took the test and he said, that's all you do. He says, no, you get your beeping out of this truck and crawl underneath and show me where the air drain valve is. And I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> oh, it, was, it, was, it was the universe paying you back for that written test, Dan. <laughs> All right. How about some questions? 
Sure. Um, CN used a six axle or a six wheel uh, truck under a lot of their passenger cars, coaches, baggage cars. Uh, when are we going to tool one? When we tool a car that needs a car. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're working on it. We're yep. on. Yep. We'll make it available. Absolutely. One day. Seriously working on it. But uh, Josh is the designer of that car and he's right now designing a diesel locomotive. So yeah. he'll do the car afterwards. It's the Ingalls 4S. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's the, it's the Krauss Muffy. Shh. Yes. Don't tease me with that. Hey, we, we just said Rio Grande and SP sells well, so. There you go. <laughs> uh, speaking about locomotives, we got our, our, our monthly request for GP40 TCs from the same person. No, well, we're, we can't do a GP40 TC because we're busy making GVOs. Yes, GVOs and SP70 M-2s. Uh, that is our, uh, that is our, our secret the diesel locomotive announcement. It's a GVO. We announced that on uh, April 1st. I don't think we have enough GVOs in the Some world. Some people actually believe that. We actually got people that, that seriously were really excited and thought we were making them on April 1st when we announced them on April 1st. Why would we do that? Exactly. <laughs> like, hello, here's a model that Everybody three, else has four done. other manufacturers have done, and we're going to bring out the same thing. Right. It's yeah. the new F unit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That we that's something we had a request for. Yeah. F7s. Repito Repito F7s, yeah. yeah. I think we should. I think we should too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk to Bill. F sevens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Santa Fe C F sevens. C F sevens. Alex. No, not C F seven. Fucking C F sevens. What did you say just say yes to? I thought you said S P F sevens. They didn't really No, C -F you owned F P sevens. Oh, okay. Gee, fine. Everyone's already done it. It's SP, FP7s anyway. But I'll, I'll vote for a CF7. CF7s. Jeez. What's the uh, everywhere? RSC24s. Okay. Oh, that's like apples and oranges. <laughs> not even. Not no, even that's like lemons oranges. and limes. <laughs> <laughs> Next nice question. Uh, what's caused the delay with the N-scale F40s? We don't know. <laughs> uh, actually, I can tell you exactly what caused the delay. The cause of delay was um, COVID. And uh, normally, uh, our factory is working until about a week or two before Chinese New Year. Uh, and a lot of people went home uh, a couple months before Chinese New Year because there was a real scare for COVID at the time in China. And a lot of our workers are from Guangxi province and Guangxi province said that uh, if you don't come home now, you're never coming home. We're, we're closing the border. Um, so a lot of our workers left and that, that, that's what caused a whole bunch of knock on delays. That's why the 1200s, was, the first shipment was supposed to leave China in February and I'm leaving China in April, uh, late March, early April, whenever that was. Um, and that's why the N-scale F40s have not been done yet. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. The N-scale F40s are now uh, in production, I think we got photos from the factory showing shells in progress. Yeah, I posted that on uh, Facebook. And, uh, there you go. So they are in production now, um, and it shouldn't take too long to make them. And the, the same thing with the HOF forties. We talked about that before. They're they're well along. They're they're HOF four is well along. Yeah, yeah. That that factory has been pretty busy. Like the 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 only reason that things have taken longer there is because there were so many Canadians. Uh, the Canadian is our, our biggest selling end scale project by like 50% yeah. in terms of sales more than any others. And in terms of like dollar value for us, uh, more than any other, more than 50%, almost 60% now. So it's, it's, it's a huge project. There were thousands upon thousands of cars that had all had to be assembled, painted, decorated, et cetera. Uh, I've got a paint question here. Uh, do we have any update on the paint line where it sits where it sits right now in terms of returning re going back into production restocking new paint colors we are still discussing it with the paint manufacturer uh, we were putting it down uh yeah yeah i guess it's, i think the ball's in our court right at the moment yeah we got i think we need to uh we need to get that running again mm -hmm. yep for sure <clears throat> 
All right, I'm starting to run out of questions here, so it might be almost that time. I've been I've been playing with this bit of blue tack, and it's getting it's it itself is also getting pretty fuzzy, just like that Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the day, what time is it? It's actually almost nine o'clock. Yeah. Uh, Almost nine. Nine. We started at seven. No way. We were yeah. for almost two hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, holy Moses! I didn't realize. Oh, we do one, one last question, then we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll move along. Uh, it's got Matt's got to answer. He hasn't talked enough. <laughs> oh well, I was going to answer a question or ask a question that was totally unrelated to that, but uh, it keeps uh, getting darker and darker on my screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have a Matt question. I was gonna I was gonna ask a VHA question. You can ask whatever you like. We'll answer, yeah, but that, Matt has to answer how, one how, question. How is uh, how is the VHA doing? Uh, it's, too it's, much on we'll be launching a VHA's first video uh, in the next couple of days. I'm having trouble logging into the YouTube channel. Um, That's gonna be, the VHA is going to have its own new YouTube. Yeah, channel? it's going to have its own YouTube channel. We'll link to it in our next newsletter. We'll send people there. And is there going to be a VHA Instagram page? Want to tell page. people what VHA is for uh, VIA Historical uh, Association? Yes. Yeah. So Rapido has donated all of its six pieces of equipment to the VHA. Um, and uh, we're, we're starting a, a, a museum collection of historical VIA Rail Canada equipment. And uh, so it's coming along. It's coming along. Um, we'll be promoting the organization uh, and doing some fundraising. Uh, if you can go to viahistory.ca, you can make a donation. Uh, anything is appreciated, obviously, because it's all donor-based. Um, nobody's paid at VHA. Uh, and we're restoring we're restoring all via cars so it's good stuff absolutely and i pretty much you gotta ask something to matt i know i gotta find some for matt they're all they're all cn questions uh, ask matt a cn uh, question all right um matt <laughs> would repeat be interested in making cn's great lakes or freighters it's that's an interesting idea. I don't know uh, if we're in the business of boats or not. <laughs> See, Mac can answer these just as easy as I can, or Dan can. <laughs> Ask another one to Mac. All right. Any recommendations on where I can find an HO scale TARDIS? Don't you have one on your desk? Mini prints, don't they make one? <laughs> No, Jordan, uh, I do not have one on my desk. <laughs> oh, I, meant, I meant to say Jason, but uh, if you want to, if you want to answer that one, <laughs> we designed one years ago. We always mean to put it on the mold. We really got to do that. I thought you did a three D printed one, or you had one somewhere. I don't think it was will, there's a full size one down the hall from your office. Yeah, I've noticed that once or twice, and whenever I have to move it, <laughs> five, it's on five. wheels. Quit your complaining. <laughs> My kids are upset that the door is seized open. You gotta fix that. Jordan, fix that, please. Oh, you remember that was a panic when it came in? You gotta paint this thing. <laughs> remember you spent like three days just like reassembling it and fixing it? And Hang on, we did. I thought we did paint it. We did paint it. We did paint it. Oh, yeah. Why was I? I painted it too. You came along, oh, I'll help you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> He came along and took a picture and said, <laughs> we, we did it. <laughs> like, and I'm you not going to build me a green screen. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, remember you built that green screen. It took you about a week. And then about six months after you build it, built it, the, uh, the toilet pipe and the ceiling burst and we had to tear it all out. <laughs> <laughs> on New Year's Eve. Yes. That Year's is what happened. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Or I was, I was at, I think I was at a wedding or something like I that. I used that, that green screen, I think, the office. twice. I used it twice, something like that. That was terrible. Yeah. Because Any more questions for Matt? I don't know. They're all uh, pretty much everything. All right. Uh, I have to go upstairs and uh, yeah. watch an episode of Clone Wars with my nine-year-old. Here's a question. Uh, last question for Matt. Um, can you uh, can you make a P thirty CH and an E forty four? Get right on it. Yeah, uh, awesome. <laughs> I approve of that message. So, all right, this has been fun. Actually, I I have to say, like, you know, it's it, it feels like our bus ride, even though Matt wasn't there. Um, 
when Jordan, Dan, and I spent three days driving across Canada in our bus. Oh, we're we're missing. Hey guys, yeah. <laughs> right. we left Jordan behind a few times. We drive <laughs> off into the sunset. A few times. <laughs> and uh, and that that actually stands out as one of one of my fondest memories of my entire life. Best um, one was when you slammed the brakes on on the bus and told him to run into that field there and get a picture of us driving by to get <laughs> 10 feet into this freshly plowed field. <laughs> I had to put away those shoes too. Those are new shoes. I had to go all the way into the field. And then, and then, and then so he runs you know. into the bus. He runs into the bus holding the camera, trips on the steps, and lands lens first. No, on the floor. Because you know what happened? It, no, I, it la I landed lens first because you said, get on the bus right now. You have to get on the bus. You didn't stop. You were you kept rolling. <laughs> You're doing about two miles an hour. So I jumped on the bus, broke the lens of the camera. Yeah, and then remember, we had no heat on the bus. <laughs> well, I fell asleep wrapped up in the blanket trying to keep warm. You take I, a picture and post yeah. it. And some guy I, says, when did you pick up the homeless guy? <laughs> I do remember, though, You, I, I got another picture of you giving me the finger after you realized I was taking your picture. So. <laughs> and then Jordan was buying... Jordan bought Tim Hortons and Brandon, and the bus is doing this, and he's managing with his open... To the extra large tea not to spill anything yeah. <laughs> while he's on his phone <laughs> yeah, poor, poor dan on that trip when you, you went off to the grocery store to get the or, the organic uh vegetarian dinner yeah i we wanted to, beef we, yeah we wanted beef so we walked off to the restaurant we had to walk back through a dark field and dan stepped in a gopher hole and we broke his ankle did not drop my food though. You did not drop your food. Uh, they went to get the car washed and they sprayed up through the vents and flooded the bus. Yeah, and you made me stand in there to protect the bus. <laughs> well, these guys are hosing it down. Protect the bus from the wash rack. Oh, that was brutal. Uh, it was great though when we saw the Canadian and we're on the phone to BRL. Where is it now? Where is yeah, it now? We wait four hours. <laughs> Uh, and I made supper for us in Brandon, and we went to my in-laws' house in Winnipeg, and they made us soup. Yeah, yeah, that was good soup. That was good <laughs> soup. There. Yeah. We, yeah, we stayed the night. That's right. Mm -hmm. Who had the basement? I did. You were in the basement, so you were in Yaffa's room. Mm -hmm. Jordan, you were in Avital's room, and I was in Sadura's room. <laughs> yeah, well, that's when you told me to take the bus over to uh, Jeff's place and park it for the night. And I'm trying to follow Jeff in his pickup truck as he's speeding at 80 kilometers an hour through the city streets. Yeah, I got this 40 foot bus trying there to was, go. There, was, a, there was actually one point. Yeah, there was one point where you ended up with two wheels on the sidewalk and two wheels on. The yeah, road. I did. I literally went up the curb and I'm down the boulevard trying to keep up with him. <laughs> and I'm like Jeff. I'm Good trying God. to keep up with you here. Well, then when we went to the, we went to the vegetarian restaurant and, and I didn't realize we that made him keep thing. going. No, no, that, that the streets met at like a V and we had to make a right. And it was like a 12 point turn to get around that corner. Yeah, but don't you remember every time he'd sit down, Jordan, go check the bus. Yeah. He'd walk three blocks up, he'd get right back down. He'd just yeah. sit down. You better go check that bus again. <laughs> yeah, you want to make sure that no one was stealing a 40 foot bus that could only do 42 miles an hour. <laughs> hey, it'll do, it'll do 50. Downhill. Uh, with it, with almost 55 it, almost 55 all there yeah downhill what, what, one one last question let's do one last question and we'll probably call it a night um uh how how well is the new product suggestion box working um last time i checked we had over a thousand uh requests for new products so that's i'd say that's done very well and we do uh kind of go on we, we look here's at, yeah explain give give how many is the most single most out of the thousand suggestions? Which locomotive type has the most requests? Or not say which one, but how many requests for the most requested one? I'll answer that. <laughs> we have like 400 different products requested in a yeah. thousand, thousand emails. Well, it, well, the way the way the the way the system calculates things, it just it it uh, it's not necessarily consistent. So. <laughs> But we do we do check them and we do review. And the them. and the biggest request with three was the GP forty TC. Yes, it was <laughs> all from and Matt Donnelly. Yeah, all yeah. from Matt Donnelly. Yeah. But I will say uh, there was a time up until about a month ago where 
somebody from the team had to respond to every single one of those emails. So if it takes us 30 seconds to do every email and we've saved a thousand emails, that shows you how much time we've saved just doing 30,000 seconds. That's many, many hours. <laughs> so um, it's like eight it's hours. Working. It's working. And, uh, and we are still getting those requests. So we are, we are. Reviewing. Yeah, aren't you impressed that I figured that out in my head? Come on. Very. Oh, you're uh, counting with your toes. We know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good comeback there, but I'm not going to say it because I like you all. <laughs> Well, that's what I learned from Golden Girls. That stuff, my, wife I, my wife and I have been watching Golden Girls. So we're, we're actually in season seven now. Every night we watch an episode before bed. And uh, it's a great one. I'll tell you, you got Pandemic Blues, find an 80s sitcom, and watch one episode a night, right before bed. UKRP. Or 70s sitcom, as the case may be, yes. Um, we're, so we're, we're finishing up Golden Girls, so I bought the DVD box set of Cheers, all 11 seasons. So that's next. <laughs> Cheers. Nice. Yeah. All right. It's been great. This has been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I almost got fired a couple times, but uh, it doesn't seem to be. The well, case. just remember, post COVID, Rapido is doing our uh, our trip probably on the ocean to Halifax as a the full team, and I and I'm covering the bill. So Matt, you got to be there. And I will uh, be there. We'll let we'll let people my know request after now. we booked. No, after we booked, we'll let people know which train we're gonna be on, and then we can get like. The modelers and rail fans booking on the same train. We just have a party. I'm serious. Let me my request now. I'm not sharing with Garcia unless you buy of me course, earplugs. You, of course you're sharing with Garcia. You always unless you buy Garcia. me earplugs. <laughs> you kidding me? I've already got the short straw because I've got to share with Craig. <laughs> I'm as, long as, I don't, as long as I don't have to share the section with the guy from 2016 that was smoking pot in the sections. Uh, oh, you remember him? Oh, yeah. Oh, he oh, was yeah. brutal, that boy. Yeah. That's the guy oh, yeah. I made fall out of the upper bunk. <laughs> Hug me. It's like my first time on a Canadian. That's what I have to deal with. So. And the, the conductor would come by and he'd go, and he'd open my drape, and I go, it's not me. Like so in the night, I moved his ladder to the other end. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're. <laughs> He stopped smoking and he didn't come back. I don't know where he went. Oh, he got off. At, I'm pretty sure he got off at Winnipeg. Or That's was awesome. that sorted off? It's one of the two. I don't know. But, That's yeah. awesome. That was a good trip. Uh, I miss the Canadian. I really do. Coming back once a week, May, was it May 20th? Yeah, but you still can't go to the dome car. You can't leave your room. You can't go to eat the diner for lunch. Like, yeah. It's, I'll wait until it's proper service before I go back. Yeah. But at but, least you cross provincial boundaries now. Yeah, so so my kids and I are like so if 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 it's if it's running full service by the time we go to Winnipeg for our annual trip in the summer, uh, I'm thinking if we can if I have enough points to do it, we're gonna fly to Vancouver and take the train back, <laughs> just so we can spend more time on the train. Did they not tear the station the, down in Horn Pain? Yeah, stations. I think they were in the process, or were about to tear. Yeah, I think it's all gone now. Yeah. Um, it's been boarded up for years. Yeah, I think it's finally boarded hasn't it? Yeah. But it looked like it was pretty, uh, pretty rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. My kids love horn pain. Well, they because it used to stop there during the day. They run to get junk food. Now we go to Sioux Lookout, and we go to the Sioux Lookout convenience store for junk food, and uh, and we're 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 getting we're on. We're, we've got like a ten minute stop at Sioux Lookout. Everybody runs to get junk food, right? And there's a guy in front of us. We're all we're all from the train. Okay, the train comes for ten minutes, three times, twice a week. Okay, all right. And this is when Joe Local decides to do his lottery tickets. <laughs> yeah, I need winner Ganyon. Uh, <laughs> like, holy crow! Like, come on! And he, he's he's scratching new ones. He's putting in his old tickets. Like, we're here for ten minutes. Wait for your for cock the lottery tickets. <laughs> You know, and you can tell the guys in the store are looking at him like, seriously? Like, seriously, you're doing this now? Like, I have a line of 30 people, and they're about to turn around and walk out of my store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the population to look out doubles when the Canadian comes through. <laughs> yes, for 10 minutes. Exactly. All right. So, uh, yeah, wrap up. Wrap up. Uh, yeah. Jordan. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. This has been actually a lot of fun again. It's been so it's been a lot of fun for us. Was it a lot of fun for anybody else? I don't know. They're probably, they probably, they probably <laughs> all tuned in 45 us? minutes ago. We probably got eight people watching it. It's going to be Chris Fox, Bobby, 
Josh and uh, Matt Donnelly. And Matt, Matt Donnelly and a couple of M scalers upset that we're not making everything. <laughs> <M-scale>. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. So, all right. Let's uh, let's call it a night then. That was fun. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us. So you're gonna time. you're gonna you're gonna press stop and then we stay here or we all leave. Uh. Oh, I gotta press. I gotta figure out how to do that. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> press stop. How do you press stop? It's a good question. Oh, there I found it. All right. <laughs> Okay, you gotta, you're gonna find the button. It's it's hidden under the more the more tab. So That's, all, all right. right. So I'm gonna leave then. See you guys later. Uh, all right. I need to go for a minute. Don't don't go yet. All right. Okay. See you later, everyone. All right. Goodbye.